reporting for Katie Chats here at the Child Care Resource and Research Unit in downtown Toronto with the Executive Director and Founder, Martha Friendly. Tell me a little bit about how you got involved in the film Status Quo. Um, the way I got involved in it actually was that Karen Show, the director, phoned me and said that she was going to be making a National Film Board film which would include child care as one of the key unfinished pieces of women's business and uh, business of feminism actually and I thought that is fantastic so we talked a lot she you know she interviewed me we talked about some of the content and um, eventually you know they they did interviews that they used in the film so you know it was um, it was completely out of it was completely unexpected to me and tell me a little bit about how child care is a huge influence on feminism and women's rights well I mean, for many of us, I mean, and I guess this would be true for working mothers or grandmothers, um, child care, it, it, the way I always think about it is uh, it's the ramp to women's equality in the workforce. And that comes from, a, it's a quote from Rosie Abella, actually, many years ago. And it's really true that if women have children, we still, women still have children, and that if women want to have careers and be in the workforce and have um, a life outside of the home, there has to be really good care for their children. Mm -hmm. And so that's really where it starts from. But then it sort of takes off into all sorts of issues like poverty and what happens to women when they're older and how w in immigrant women get integrated into, the, into Canadian society and all sorts of things. But it really has to do with work and family, women having children, still having the main responsibility for children in reality, which actually is the way it is. And that really needs to be something really good done for children, not just a place to put them while the mother works. And is this something that uh, crosses all socioeconomic barriers, do you think? I certainly think it crosses all socioeconomic barriers. I mean, I, I've never seen it as an issue for the poor or exclusively for wealthy women who can afford to hire their own child care. I think that's very well done in the, in the, in the film. But, I mean, that's the way I've always viewed it as a researcher and as a, an activist. Um, it was so for me as a middle-class woman, but it's true for everybody across the spectrum single mothers. And I, the other thing that I think is really important is that it should be seen as one program, not separate programs, not two-tier programs for different people. It's a really uniting kind of thing in society. And what do you think we can do as a society to help encourage that and help women who are working? Well, I think what we should do as a society is that the government has to organize and pay for the most, most of the cost of childcare. To me, the problem is that now we encourage it, just as you said. But it's not a matter of encouraging it. It should be a social program. It's a public good, just so as we have education. In a lot of countries, they have much more public, publicly funded and publicly delivered uh, programs from an early age. And that's, I mean, to me, that's the, really the way to do it, that there is really no other way to do it. And for those who may not know, can you tell me a little bit more about what you do here at the Child Care Resource and Research, Research Unit? Yes, well, we're a social policy institute. We were originally part of the University of Toronto. We've been an independent nonprofit group for, um, since, for, since 2006. And um, what we do is we do research and policy development exactly for a national publicly funded, publicly delivered and nonprofitly delivered uh, child care and early childhood education program and that involves all kinds of things like um, collecting data, making it available, doing other kinds of research, connecting research with, the, with each other and trying really to work to develop the policy in Canada. Canada is a very low country in child care. It's one of the worst of the uh, OECD countries mm -hmm. and so people like me have been trying to put forward the arguments and the evidence about why this would be a really good thing for governments to do. For as long as I can remember, for about 40 years. And you've seen the film Status Quo. How do you yeah. think that the general audience will respond to it, and how do you hope that they will? Well, I've actually experienced, we, uh, we showed Status Quo at a, at a conference last week, and the response to it was tr absolutely tremendous. I was actually also at a screening when it opened in Toronto. And I think that the uh, response to it, especially, and I want to emphasize from young women, who really don't even re know, they weren't around when the Royal Commission on the Status of Women reported. The, the, you know, the scenes of women wearing hats and gloves, you know, and sort of being a completely different kind of feminist is really striking. So I think that um, what I have heard is that it's a great teaching tool, that it really uh, pulls the three issues together really well that I think the, the thing that really struck me about it, and I think other the young women in the conference that I was at last week, was 
the idea that there are young feminists, like really young activist feminists who really, um, the rebel group, I mean, I've seen them. And that's the kind of thing that we're all thinking that we really need is, you know, these young women to pass the torch to. Because as the film says, feminism is an unfinished business. And uh, women like me, feminists like me, have been around for a long time. Now, we need younger women to sort of take it up and really press the point home with, the, with governments, basically, and the population. Um, it's not that there have been no changes, but there haven't been enough changes. And do you think that we should have a larger representation of women in Parliament? Of course I think so. Canada is also very low on uh, the way women are represented in political office. But keep in mind that it's only one thing. It's important, but it's a whole con collection of things. Because you know there are women who are in politics who are very right-wing and who are anti-feminist. So it's, yes, um, if you look at countries like Norway, for example, which I think were more than 50% women in the, national, in the national parliament at one point, uh, those countries have a very good record on women's issues, but it's not necessarily because they've elected women. So I see it as hand in hand and part and parcel of a lot of other things. And you know, ultimately, this is a really political issue. So I see that one way to take issues forward is for women who have progressive ideas about women and other things, uh, all kinds of other things, to actually become elected and take them into right, right there into the political arena. But it's only one thing. You know, you have to t we have to take it up on all levels. And where is the best place to find out more information on you and the unit here and on status quo and the screenings online? <laughs> well, we have a very, we have a, a really good website that's a, it's a portal to knowledge on early childhood education and child care. It's www.childcarecanada.org. And of course, we have on our website as an item, we have a list of all the screenings um, about status quo, but we have, you know, we have lots of things, and so that would be the best place to find out about Child Care in Canada, and um, the National Film Board website is really the place to find out about status quo, actually. Great. Thank you so much. Congratulations on all of your amazing work, and best of luck with all of your upcoming projects. Okay, well, thank you, and you can wish me good luck when we have a National Child Care Program. I will. <laughs> thank you. you. I'm Katie Ullman, reporting for Katie Chats here at the Child Care Resource and Research Unit in downtown Toronto.